Why is having a Transgender Day of Remembrance important? My name is Brent Hawks, and if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so. It only takes a few seconds. It really helps us. November the 20th is Transgender Day of Remembrance each year. And according to GLAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, it was started in 1999 by transgender advocate Gwendolyn Ann Smith as a vigil to honor the memory of Rita Hester, the transgender woman who was killed in 1998. For most transgender people, the, their journey has been full of many, many challenges. The personal journey of discovering and accepting who you are and making the decisions to live who you are. The issue of coming out to your family and hopefully gaining their acceptance. The issue of going to school or going to educational institutions. The issue of community acceptance the issue of faith communities, hopefully accepting, but very, very often not. The issue of discrimination in many areas of their lives. The issue of unemployment. Unemployment is very high in the transgender community. And to quote transgender activist Rachel Clark, it's not that we're trying to break through the glass ceiling, it's, try it's that we're trying to break through the ground floor just to get a job. And of course, the issue of the rampant number of murders in many countries around the world. Some of these things I've just mentioned are very similar to things that gay and lesbian people go through in their own coming out process. But for transgender people, the challenge is even greater because the discrimination is even greater. Few jurisdictions in our world have any kind of discrimination protection for transgender people or any kind of supportive legislation. And it's very notable that recently President-elect Biden of the United States in a speech was the first to mention transgender people. Well, we have a responsibility to care for each other and to work on these kinds of issues. This year, I want to particularly challenge the gay and lesbian and bisexual communities we are not as accepting and inclusive as we need to be. And we need to remember how challenging our own coming out was and how much more difficult is this coming out and transitioning process for transgender people. When I was the chair of the community advisory panel for Pride Toronto, we surveyed the broader LGBT community and thousands of people completed those surveys. And we asked what are the main values within the LGBT community and there was one value that stood out far above all the rest. Inclusivity. We who have been excluded don't want to exclude others and yet sometimes we do. For decades we've been talking about the freedom to control our own bodies. We need to extend that same freedom to transgender people. Sadly, there were 331 reported, so many more, but reported murders of trans and gender diverse people in 2019. 331 in one year. Many of those uh, reported murders were happened in Brazil, totaling 130. Mexico, 63. The United States, 30, according to transrespect.org. In conclusion, Rainbow Faith and Freedom is shortly launch, launching its resource pillar. That will be a place on our website where we have resources for people coming out who are struggling with the issue of their sexuality or their gender and their faith. A place, especially during COVID, for people to go to get supportive resources. And so if you know of any transgender um, resources that are out there and can pass them on to us so we can include them in that uh, resource, that would be great. Or if you could pass on to any transgender friends that you have that that resource is available, that would also uh, be helpful. And if you're watching this in time, uh, if you'd like to attend our launch week, it's from November the 24th to the 29th, and you can register with the free link that's below. And there will be some trans activists speaking during that launch week. And if you register, you can get the full schedule. Recently, I came across this prayer by transgender activist Kasumi Takara, who goes by she, her. She's a member of the Metropolitan Community Church in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And she writes that she felt very, very blessed to find Metropolitan Community Church and that they have become family to her. And this was her prayer. Thank you, God, 
for changing our sadness and tiredness into courage, for giving us the courage to tell people that we weren't boys or girls, even though it made some people very mad, for teaching us to love ourselves as we are, for giving us the gift of honesty, for letting our outside be like our inside, for giving us the courage to be ourselves. God, remind us of our plentitude. Remind us of the gift we are to the world due to our infinite complex diversity. Remind us of the ancient times when transgender people were priests and shamans because people knew we were a gift. So may it be. Amen. If you found this video helpful, could you please pass it on to your friends? And don't forget to check the button to subscribe or the little bell beside the button so that you can get a notice whenever we post a new video. Thank you.